What's going down, guys? Okay. Uh, you want a project update? I got a pretty good project update for you guys. Uh, we've been waiting quite a long time for all the stuff to come together for the SLP 35th anniversary Pro Touring Camaro build. Um, we ordered the last of our parts. Well, not the last, but close to the last of our parts that we needed to get going on stuff. That's part of it. That's part of it. And so I started masking on the engine block and the cylinder heads because we're going to do some custom paint work on this stuff before it goes together. And then I have a camera on my tripod and I have a whole bench full of goodies and documentation and bits and parts and Some coffee, gaskets, and more parts, and more parts, and so I figure maybe we'll do an unboxing video. It's been a minute for some unboxing videos, and then I'll uh, do some talking and show you some cool parts, and let you know just exactly where I am and where I'm going a little bit. Mostly it's going to be about this Camaro, and then there'll be a little bit of shop update in there. So. Fair warning, it's gonna be a lot of talking, but it's gonna be a lot of cool parts. That says Mosier. Thanks for being here, guys. Hope you're enjoying the project and uh, hope you guys are liking it enough to hit that subscribe button for me and that like button, because this thing's gonna be amazing. Thank you so much to the client, my friend, my buddy, my pal. This is amazing, dude. Thank you. I'll talk at you guys soon. What do you want to do first? Let's do this one. I haven't seen it yet. Um, I always try to lay my parts out. You see my red camera down here. Nothing expensive, just a can of cool picks. Um, but I've kind of tipped my hat to my documentation. When I do these jobs for people, so I always put a nice backdrop down on the table so that when I pull the parts out of the box for the first time, um, I can really get a good picture of the part of the condition that it came out of the box. This is a oh, yeah. I always forget how to pronounce all these parts. I've been getting so much. Shit. It's a Mylodon. Mylodon baffled oil pan for track use. Oh. Dang. Yeah, way to be. They even signed their stuff. That's cool. It was made a year ago, but. All right, so this thing's got trap doors down here in the bottom of it. So when your oil's sloshing around, the trap door will close and keep the oil from escaping. And I can count one, two, three, four, five, five trap doors. And then a nice, good baffled system. And then uh, this is the pickup tube, the Mylodon pickup tube that um, goes with it. And this said that it needed a specific pickup tube. The other thing that we are going to have to run with this, as it said, I have not ordered that yet, is a remote filter, remote oil filter setup. And I'll leave that. On. So this is gonna sit in here, yeah. So I'm, I'm happy like this. Somewhere's in here, um, and so this thing sits down in. The pickup sits way down inside, and I think if I remember right, they actually have a measurement to make sure that this thing sits within a certain distance from the bottom of the pan, so that way all the oil gets trapped inside this, 
right here is where it comes down at. And if you're forward, back, side to side, the oil can't get out of the sump because of the trap doors, but it'll allow it in. So that's basically the premise of that. And then, like I said, this sucker is gonna be, oh baby, behind those. And then it's gonna be up here in place of that. What I'm shooting for is jewelry. We want automotive jewelry underneath the hood of this car. I'm trying to keep you guys in frame. Yeah, oh crap, I forgot my hat's off here. Now we're better. All right, next part, what are we doing? Um, so the oil pan, I guess I can pull you these out and show you these. coil packs oh, we're gonna put more fuel and more air through her oh, we might as well bump up the spark keep the spark hot that way we're making sure we're combusting all the way so we got those um, I really they say that you can you can run the factory rockers because they actually are pretty good um, geometry um, and I did get a trinian upgrade for them, but after I got to thinking and looking and I kind of really went back and forth I don't want to suffer any power loss here By not having a roller tip. And I know it might be not a lot, but This <laughs> roller is just less friction and the less friction the better and I got all new hardware and pads and Cool, so I'm gonna go roller set up on top um, here's the exhaust manifold gaskets that we need, and then this is a double roller. Double roller, hex key adjustable style setup. So it's got two instead of a single on both sides. And the chain is much, much fatter. So this give us more longevity. Stickers, anybody without stickers. Next, um, these, are the, so these are the Flash Specialty um, gaskets for the intake that I'll show you here in just a second, but these are to seal off the cathedral ports. So, there's those. Um, because we're doing a lot of detail contrast work, I went back and forth because of the price of these things, but Really, the price doesn't just, doesn't, how do I say this? The price doesn't do this part justice. I mean, and I know you guys aren't holding this part in your hand, but when I pulled this thing out of the box and actually got a good look at it and was looking at it, like we made the right call on this one. I know it's just one of those things, but sometimes as a builder, you gotta make executive decisions and I promise you when this car is all done, all these little details are gonna be like, yeah, I'm so glad he did that. So there's the fast specialties, red matching fuel rails. Okay. Um, okay engine gaskets, I don't think you guys need to see that. They're just gaskets. Um, Ooh. Want to see the big mouth? Oh, of course you guys want to see the big mouth. So this is the fast specialties. 102 millimeter big mouth. Fuel injection throttle body. 
Just for reference, I can palm a basketball with my hand and my fist. I always use as a four inch marker. My fist is four inches wide. <laughs> I can fist this thing. Yeah, baby. Oh. Oh man, you know what would be really cool? Shit. Check this out. Talk about details? I'm thinking, guys, I'm thinking. Colors. How can I get a clear intake tube? Glass intake tube, poly, colored poly. I wanna see that. I wanna see that in the engine compartment. I don't wanna cover that. Man, that look cool. Okay, there's the big mouth. Let's put you back away. All right. Eh, bench is clean enough. Those are gaskets. Uh, ooh, here, you ain't gonna see this one, huh? Uh, I gotta put you down and go get this one. Hang on. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. detail I want to add. I'm going to get my red and I'm going to red this in right there. RHS. But dang, look at that thing. Oh. And all this stuff is carb certified. So if you wanted to take it to California, you can take it to California and DQ it. And the exhaust is going to be the hard part, but I do plan on putting catalytic converters and the muffler back in it. I'm not sure whether I'm going to run dual mufflers, single, if I'm going to run a factory style, single in, dual out. But it's that's the that's the last of what we're going to have to be concerned about. Uh, yeah, there's our O-ring. There, NPT fittings, and all of our fancy hardware and instructions. So. That's going to get mated to the wide mouth with the red fuel rails. And then we are, I don't have them in-house yet, but we decided that we're going to get um, some polished valve covers. We don't want any like signatures or lettering or anything on that, but we do want that polished look up here to match the headers, um, which I think will be, is a really good call. So you'll see the, you'll see the shiny valve covers with the red MSDs. And you have the red fuel rails with the fast fuel injectors. Speaking of, these aren't fast fuel injectors. These are like cells. And these are uh, 61 pound. Yeah, 61 pounders. So I debated um going as big as 60 on and on on a on an na motor um but the reality is is that if we run into a situation where we run out of fuel um in tuning um i feel comfortable with the tuning company which is probably going to be pre racing up in portland i feel comfortable after i get done with everything if they need to throw a pump in it to get extra fuel in the motor when they're tuning it at least that's all they'll have to do and they won't have to look at up in the injector size and matching the pump and rerun the mp or rerun the an lines and all that kind of crap to make all this stuff work so i'm going to set it up as if it's going to need more fuel i'm pretty sure that the factory fuel pump is going to supply what we need for this motor because we're naturally aspirated um but if we get to a point where we want to put some boost in it or if it just isn't quite up to the fuel numbers if we're at 
you know, if we're midway in the duty cycle and we're just running out of fuel pressure, then we're going to throw a pump at it and at least we won't have a clog here at the injectors. So I went ahead and did the injectors to match the intake and everything else. So bam, 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 bam. Good, 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 good. All right, last fun box. Let's see if I can carry this fun box with one hand. Where are we going with this fun box? It's, it's got a Texas logo on it. Put you over here, and then we'll put this back here. Put you back in your home. We won't need you for a few days, maybe. First of next week. So this is our Moroso high volume oil pump, not high pressure. We don't need high pressure, we want high volume. We want as much volume as we can put through that thing. Um, so there's the high volume oil pressure. Um, those are push rods. Here it is our cam. And this thing jiggles in the box and it scares me every time. <laughs> uh, so this is a Tsunami. V2 camshaft, 235, 240 duration with a 629 lift. So because of that amount of lift and that duration, um, these are the link mass push rods that came from Texas Speed for that camshaft and my head setup. And then in my heads, um, we've got the titanium seeds, guides, and retainers. Uh, these are CNC ported, big boys with the upgraded valve springs. So, so that kind of covers it for engine compartment stuff. It is gonna be tuned on HP tuners. He's already got the tuner and the programming from another car that we built a year ago or so. Well, he built a couple years ago, whatever. Um, so yeah, he's got the HP tuners. We gotta yank this rear axle out of here. So we were kind of looking at it and trying to decide what we we're going to do. Uh, somebody's been in this thing at some point, so I don't know what's in, you know what they did to it, how long it's been put together, that kind of thing. It's still got 354s in it for gear ratio, so we wanted to come down to a 373, maybe even to a 410. Kind of went rounds back and forth about what we wanted to do, and I basically told the client, like, look, if, yeah, if you want me to put a bunch of money into this thing, I can, but no matter what we do, it's still... It's still a 10 bolt man like it's a ticking time bomb no matter what we do especially bands where and all that crap under the hood of this thing so really i know it's a it's another pill to swallow but really the way to go would be to put a 12 bolt in it and so he kind of asked and uh, what it would take where we could get it if it was possible what it would mean if we did you know and we went back and forth for a week or so and we just decided to hell with it pull the trigger in this box right here is a Moser 12 bolt and it's set up with four tens a mechanical limited slip um, adjustable control arm brackets and the factory sway bar brackets welded onto the tube instead of a u-bolt style bracket like i was going to have to run on the other pan hard bar setup so yeah we gotta get this thing uncrated and get this axle yarded out and get a new axle put in it. Uh, you guys wanna see the motor? Let's get a crowbar. <laughs> well, I thought that I was going to be able to finish this video before I got paint shot on these parts and I made a liar out of myself. So there you go. Are you following what I'm spraying yet? 
So these got two heavy coats of etch, self etching primer on the block and on the surfaces of the heads. This is obviously after it was scuffed and cleaned and wax and grease remover and all that good stuff. Um, this is actually a matte black. It still looks a little bit shiny right now because it's still flashing off. It doesn't really get its dullness. The, um, the flattening agent doesn't really do its job until all the solvent has evaporated out of this thing and the hardener's all the way locked up. So it looks a little bit shinier right now than what it will um when it's all done when it's all done curing but there is the bottom end of the block and the cylinder heads are done and ready to assemble so i've got the new valve covers on their way and i also have the arp head bolts on their way so i should be able to start assembling this thing maybe first of next week it's looking like because i'm going to move el camino over to the house here just as soon as the weather's clear it's got bare metal so i don't want to get it wet but anyway, in the meantime, we've got this nice, shiny crate with stickers on it and goodies inside. So how's about we finish up this video and at least give me something to do? Uh, I'm lying. I've been filming, but I haven't been editing. I got like four or five episodes for you guys all filming and ready to go. But this may be the first one that you see. No, it's probably the second one. You'll see the wheeling video, then you'll see this one. So anyway, I'm going to get my crowbar and set you guys up and we'll get this Mosher 12 bolt pulled out. Yeah. It's 12 volt time. Alright. You know all think this thing looks like. unit guys sway bar mounts adjustable controller mounts Should have our axle shafts and bearings and all that stuff in that box. You can see it has a uh, 5 8 18 studs. Um, flanges, seal kits. Not sure why they didn't install seals, but we got seal kits. There's the retainers. Documentation. Fill plug. The paperwork for the true track for the limited slip. Alloy shafts. Documentation. Stickers. Beautiful stickers. And hardware. Wild, wild ride, guys. Man. 
What's the last bag? What do you think, Josh? Uh, beats me. What's in the last bag? It's gotta be important. It's gotta be important. Pretty sure like everything here is important. It's our outer wheel bearings. So we'll have to press the wheel bearings on to the shafts and install the seals. And then the last thing that we got to do to make this whole assembly work is I'm going to make a template and send it off actually to the client because he has a company that has a laser and we're gonna make some custom backing plates because nobody makes the backing plate that I need to take the ABS adapter and amount a CTSV Gen 2 rear four pot caliper. So I'm gonna go full custom and make a bracket, make a template, send it off, have it laser cut, put some cool logos or something in it. And we'll put that on there with, oh, you wanna see the calipers? I bet you guys wanna see the calipers, huh? Okay, we'll see if we can find you a caliper over here. Oh, check this out. Them's the meats for it. Yeah, it's like that, boys. We're doing stuff like that. Okay, we still got parts on the shelf over here. Oh, looks like we've got a caliper box up here. Yes. This is going on the back. Oh boy, what a project. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the like for, button for me. If you want to keep up to date with me, it's really going to go fast from here on out. Make sure you ring that bell and you'll get an email when I put out a new video. Really looking forward to seeing this thing on the ground. Seeing it at the track and seeing it in full body and paint. Did I say that? Yeah, we said that. It's getting custom paint when it hits the ground too. Take care guys. Check you later.